Let's talk about long-term financing. The objective of this section is to evaluate the advantages and disadvantages of long-term debt financing. Businesses borrow money on a short-term basis for many valid reasons. There are equally valid reasons for long-term borrowing. Successful businesses often use the financial leverage created by borrowing money to improve their financial performance. Financial leverage is the use of borrowed funds to increase the return on owner's equity. The principle of financial leverage works as long as the firm's earnings are larger than the interest charge for the borrowed money. Table 16.3 illustrates how financial leverage can increase a firm's return on owner's equity. The most obvious danger when using financial leverage is that the firm's earnings may be lower than expected. If this situation occurs, the fixed interest charge actually works to reduce or eliminate the return on owner's equity. Of course, borrowed money eventually must be repaid. For a small business, long-term debt financing is generally limited to loans. Large corporations have the additional option of issuing corporate bonds. Many businesses finance their long-range activities with loans from commercial banks and other financial institutions. A term loan agreement is a promissory note that requires a borrower to repay a loan in monthly, quarterly, semi-annual, or annual installments. Repayment may be as long as 15 to 20 years, but long-term business loans are normally repaid in three to seven years. The interest rate and other specific terms are often based on such factors as the reasons for borrowing, the borrowing firm's credit rating, and the value of collateral. Although long-term loans may occasionally be unsecured, the lender usually requires some type of collateral. Lenders may also require that borrowers maintain a minimum amount of working capital. In addition to loans, large corporations may choose to issue bonds in denominations of $1,000 to $50,000. Corporations sell bonds so they can borrow money from numerous bondholders and raise larger amounts of money than could be borrowed from one lender. A corporate bond is a corporation's written pledge that it will repay a specified amount of money with interest. Interest rates for corporate bonds vary with the financial health of the company issuing the bond. Specific factors that increase or decrease the interest rate that a corporation must pay when it issues bonds include the corporation's ability to pay interest each year until maturity and the corporation's ability to repay the bond at maturity. The maturity date is the date on which the corporation is to repay the borrowed money. Today, most corporate bonds are registered bonds. A registered bond is a bond registered in the owner's name by the issuing company. Many corporations do not issue actual bonds. Instead, the bonds are recorded electronically. Until a bond's maturity, a corporation pays interest to the bond owner at the stated rate. On the maturity date, a registered owner will receive cash equaling the face value of the bond. Corporate bonds are generally classified in three categories. Most corporate bonds are debenture bonds, as shown in figure 16.7. A debenture bond is a bond backed only by the reputation of the issuing corporation. A mortgage bond is a corporate bond secured by various assets of the issuing firm. Typical corporate assets that are used as collateral for a mortgage bond include real estate, machinery, and equipment that are not pledged as collateral for other debt obligations. A convertible bond can be exchanged at the owner's option for a specified number of shares of the corporation's common stock. A corporation can gain in three ways by issuing convertible bonds. First, convertibles usually carry a lower interest rate than non-convertible bonds. Second, the conversion feature attracts investors who are interested in the speculative nature um, that conversion to common stock may provide. Third, if the bondholder converts to common stock, the corporation no longer has to redeem the bond at maturity. Maturity dates for bonds generally range from 10 to 30 years after the date of issue. Some bonds are callable before the maturity date. That is, the corporation can buy back or redeem them. Corporations usually pay the bond owner a call premium. The amount of the call premium is specified along with other provisions in the bond indenture. The bond indenture is a legal document that details all the conditions relating to a bond issue. A corporation may use one of three methods to ensure that it has sufficient funds available to redeem a bond issue. 
It can issue the bonds as serial bonds, bonds of a single issue that mature on different dates. It can establish a sinking fund, a sum of money to which deposits are made each year for the purpose of redeeming a bond issue. Or it can pay off an old bond issue by selling new bonds. A corporation that issues bonds must also appoint a trustee, an individual or independent firm that acts as the bond owner's representative. The corporation must report to the trustee periodically regarding its ability to make interest payments and eventually redeem the bonds. Table 16.4 compares the different types of long-term equity and debt financing. Selling common stock is generally a popular option for most financial managers. Once the stock is sold and upfront costs are paid, the ongoing costs of using stock to finance a business are low. The type of long-term financing that generally has the highest ongoing costs is a long-term loan or debt. To a great extent, firms are financed through the investment of individuals, money deposited in banks or used to purchase stocks, mutual funds, and bonds.